Suffolk County Sheriff Earl Toulon Jr. And today I'm joined by April Manis of Long Island Against Domestic Violence to have an important conversation. Everyone, I am April Manis. I am an educator with LA Against Domestic Violence. Um, so a little bit about us is we are a um, domestic violence nonprofit in Suffolk County. Um, everything is free and confidential. Um, we serve our services to anyone, um, regardless of age, citizen citizenship status, um, gender, um, anyone that needs our services are welcome to use it. Everything's trauma-informed and client-survivor-led. Uh, um, so uh, we basically give survivors information and they, um, they can then proceed how they would like to with that information. February is Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month, and to raise awareness of this issue, we wanted to have a brief conversation about spotting the signs of how we can help. The importance of raising awareness about dating violence with youth is because in school, kids learn about math, they learn about science, but no one really teaches kids how to have a healthy relationship. One in three teens in the United States will experience abuse from someone they're in a relationship with before they turn 18, and nearly 43% of college women report experiencing violent or abusive dating behaviors. Abuse, dating violence is not just physical, it can also be sexual abuse or emotional abuse as well. Teens who suffer dating abuse are subject to long-term consequences like alcoholism or drug abuse, thoughts of suicide, and often destructive and violent behavior. Sadly, one third of the teens who were involved in abusive relationships confided in someone about the violence. Some reasons they may not tell someone they're experiencing abuse is they don't want their partner to get in trouble. They aren't ready to break up with them. They're scared of their partner retaliating. They are embarrassed. They do not think anyone will believe them. Maybe their parents do not allow them to date so they do not want to tell them. And also, Many people are having their first relationship at this age and might not know how they are being treated is not normal. We want to break the silence and encourage teens to talk about it and also help them know what to look for. Yeah, so actually a lot of people think that teens don't experience um, dating violence the same way that adults do, um, where it's actually occurring the same amount, if not more, in teens. Um, and people also think that maybe it's not as severe in t the teenage population, but that's not true as well. So it's really important not to minimize that they can actually be experiencing the same level of dating violence as adults do as well. People think abuse is just physical or emotional abuse, but there's also a large amount of digital or cyber abuse happening, especially with teens. So domestic violence or dating violence is a pattern of abusive behavior in a relationship that is used by one person to gain or maintain power and control over the other. So when we're talking about cyber abuse, um, it's just the regular definition of abuse, uh, but facilitated through technology, unfortunately. So it's somebody using technology to um, harass or intimidate a partner, to surveil or monitor, which we see a lot with like the tracking apps. So Unfortunately, it can be facilitated with something like Snap Maps or Find My, my, find my Friends, and that can be used, um, unfortunately, to uh, stalk and harass a partner. Um, and it can also be uh, to impersonate or blackmail as well. So there's a couple of different types of ways that somebody can use cyber abuse to abuse somebody. You know, and healthy relationships are kind, supportive, respectful, and feel secure. Some other relationship green flags are a partner who is empathetic, they can take personal responsibility, able to compromise, respect boundaries, they're dependable, supports your personal growth, has their own interests, are able to show vulnerability, values your thoughts and opinions, and are self-reflective. Unhealthy relationships are not supportive, they're disrespectful and turbulent. Some red flags are a partner with unpredictable mood swings, explosive temper, demanding too much too soon, a relationship that is moving way too fast, pressuring to engage in sexual activity, put downs and degrading remarks, making false accusations, extreme jealousy, possessiveness and constantly checking in on a partner, demanding and going through their phone, preventing a partner from doing things that they enjoy 
and isolating a partner from friends and family. So what can we do to help? If you suspect one of your peers is in an abusive relationship, don't hesitate to tell a trusted adult. This can be a parent, guidance counselor, or teacher. So what we wanna tell teens is that there are resources and there are people that um, are here to help. A lot of times um, being in an abusive relationship is an isolating experience. Um, and they might not know that there are services here to support them. They might think that they're just for adults um, or they might not be accessible for any reason. Um, so um, just kind of going through LI Against Domestic Violence's services. Um, so we have a 24 hour hotline. The number is 631-666-8833. Um, and I just want to say that it's not necessarily an emergency hotline. So it can be, but it's also for people that just have questions. They're not sure if they're in an abusive relationship. Um, they think that they might be. They just want to talk about um, it, like what they're experiencing. Um, and it's also uh, to access all of our other services as well. So, um, and sometimes it's also if a provider wants to call and ask questions or something like that, somebody can call with a friend if they're scared to call alone. Um, and just because they call, they're not um, committing to doing anything. Um, they can just call for information. So um, our hotline answers over 4,000 calls annually. In 2021, they answered over 4,600 phone calls. Um, we have Spanish speaking counselors and staff. And then we also have access to a translation service um, that provides um, translations in over 100 different languages. Um, and again, our hotline is what you would call to access all of our other services. So we have our safe harbor shelter, which um, is, uh, was founded in 1983. Um, it's in a non-disclosed location in Suffolk County um, for uh, singles and families that are affected or impacted by abuse and need a safe place to stay. Um, all of our services are um, able to be accessed from the shelter. Um, we are actually... Um, the only shelter on Long Island that can accept pets. So only 3% of shelters um, in the United States can, um, can accommodate for people's pets. Um, and we are so proud to be one of them. Um, and that's a huge reason why somebody might not leave an abusive relationship is because they don't wanna leave their pets or they're scared for their pet safety. Uh, so that kind of um, alleviates that worry. Then we also have our advocacy program. Um, so our court advocacy um, is available to a company victims in family, district, and Supreme Court, um, and they provide support and direct assistance in obtaining orders of protection. Uh, and then we have our precinct advocates, and we were actually the first uh, program in the nation to have a program like this. Um, one of our advocates are located in all the Suffolk County precincts. Um, they are able to explain what to um, expect if a police report is filed, and go over the options available under the law, including orders of protection and things like that. And then both uh, different types of our advocates are able to um, assist with safety planning. Uh, then we have our counseling, um, and that's brief short-term crisis counseling. Um, we have adult support groups in English and Spanish, child and teen counseling, and teen support groups. Um, then we have our vocational training and financial literacy program, and that helps with job placement, individual career counseling, employment skills, um, just to get people uh, either um, help them get jobs or help them get back into the work, uh, workforce, resume building, things like that. Um, and then we have, lastly, prevention education, which is uh, the team that I'm part of. Um, so we do presentations in schools, middle schools, high schools, tabling events, um, in different community organizations. Um, we always say, we'll, we'll talk to whoever is willing to listen to us speak about teen dating violence, domestic violence, uh, consent, cyber abuse, all that type of thing. Um, so again, all of our services are free and confidential. Anyone can access them. The Suffolk County Sheriff's Office has a dedicated domestic violence unit that provides victims with a safe refuge by removing batterers from the home, serving an enforcement of orders of protection, seizing weapons and executing arrest warrants against the perpetrators of domestic violence. Two of our deputy sheriffs from our domestic violence unit receive updated training from Long Island Against Domestic Violence on how to recognize signs of abuse and assist in domestic violence situations. We are looking to expand our partnership with Long Island Against Domestic Violence and hold presentations in schools and for youth organizations like Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts about teen dating violence.
I'd really like to thank April Manis and Long Island Against Domestic Violence for partnering with the Suffolk County Sheriff's Office to bring this important subject to light. We look forward to partner with Long Island Against Domestic Violence to make sure that there are no more abuses in teen dating. Thank you so much, Sheriff Tulan. Um, I'm looking forward to this partnership as well.